The time has come and the kingdom of God is now at hand. Change the way you think and believe in the good news. Good evening, everyone. My name is Travis Alexis Newsom, and I am delighted that of all the things you could be doing at this very moment, you have chosen to spend this time here with me tonight. And it is my sincere desire and expectation that this experience will help you to become all that you're created to be. So get ready. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, drop a comment below, share, and tell everyone you know that we're about to grow together as we explore the keys of the kingdom. I'm always excited that you're here, you know that, and I have a huge announcement to share with you tonight, but before I get into that, I did want to greet the KOTK fam, you know who you are, those of you who regularly watch my videos, who have subscribed to my YouTube channel, or perhaps you engage with me through my social media platforms, or perhaps uh, we know one another personally, directly, and we engage, and you have offered words of encouragement, or you have offered encouragement in a myriad of different ways. I want to let you know how much I appreciate you, how I appreciate your support. And it always blesses me to know how this work is blessing you. I hear from so many of you about how much, how much you enjoy this program and how you watch it regularly, weekly. And so I'm so thankful for all of you. Um, also, if you're watching my video for the first time, you have never watched one of my videos before, you have no idea who I am. Well, first and foremost, welcome. So glad that you're here. I do not believe in coincidence, and I believe that you're here for a reason. I believe that this experience indeed will help you to become all that you were created to be. So I would encourage you to reach out to me, connect with me. If you're not part of the email list, that's going to be critical over the next several weeks, and I'll explain why later. But if you're not part of the email list, make sure you reach out to me. Find me at travis.alexis.newsome at gmail.com. Reach out to me via email and say, hey, count me in, and I'll add you to the email list so that anytime I send out uh, ministry updates, that you can be aware of what I'm up to for those of you who track with the work that I do. Also, uh, some of you may prefer snail mail. Feel free to reach out to me, Travis Alexis Newsom, P.O. Box number 48, Riverside, Illinois, 60546, in the good old U.S. of A. Again, that is Travis Alexis Newsom. P.O. Box number 48, Riverside, Illinois, 60546, in the good old U.S. of A. And make sure you follow me on my social media platforms. You can find me as Travis Alexis Newsom on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on all of them. As I always say, all of them, all of them. <laughs> find me there. And also make sure to follow the hashtag Travis Alexis Newsom. Anytime I post something, I try to use that hashtag so that anyone who tracks with the work that I do and what they want to, you want to receive updates or you want to be inspired by the various things that I share on my other platforms, some of which I, a lot of which, quite frankly, I don't necessarily put on this program. For those of you who want to, tr who track with what I share and you want to be kept in a loop about things that I share, that's the best way that you can do that by following me on my respective pages on those platforms, but also following that hashtag again. Travis Alexis Newsom. Also, if you have been watching my videos or if you have watched this video up until this point and you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, we got a song for you we like to sing around these parts. Goes a little something like this. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Oh, shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on. Oh. 
Yeah. Now you notice I had to cut that note short. Y'all know that note wasn't gonna make it. It's still better than that one video that I always tell you not to talk about. And I'm still getting over a little bit of stuff. You may still hear it in my voice, by the way. So I said, let me be careful about uh, doing this note here. Because I, I, I shan't be made a fool. <laughs> uh, we like to joke around. We are just messing with you. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, it is okay. But I do urge you and encourage you to do so. One, it is a great way to show support for me if you believe in the work that I'm doing. But also for you, it is a great way to stay connected and stay in the loop. Because not only when you subscribe, but also when you turn on notifications after you subscribe, you can be alerted about any time I upload a video. And as, I, as I'm about to share, that's going to be critical. I do want to mention a milestone, if you will, that I failed to mention a few weeks ago. We have crossed the threshold of 300 subscribers. 300 subscribers to this YouTube channel. And that's significant because when I started this particular work, KOTK really only had about, I don't know, 50 or something subscribers to my YouTube channel. I wasn't really as active on it. But as I began this work and things have been growing steadily, and, I, and I've said this before, I'm not trying to get everybody to know my name, contrary to how it may appear. But I am trying to connect with those who God has sent me to. And I know it helps to put my name out there for the purpose of being able to connect with those people. Amen, somebody. And so I just want to thank all of you who have subscribed, all of you who watch regularly, who have shared the videos and shared the links with others as they have blessed you. You have shared the wealth with others and you have allowed others to be blessed as well. And you have helped me to connect with people uh, that God has assigned me to, if you will, to encourage, to uplift, to build up. And so I want to let you know I appreciate and I appreciate and I celebrate each and every one of you. What else am I forgetting? Oh, speaking of which, it's time for the virtual offering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really do like this song. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's an alternative vibe that God gave me for... Uh, you know, it's a variation of the theme song to this program, which, by the way, is something that I actually created. Some of you may not be aware of that. You may just think I plopped that music. No, that's something I actually created myself with the help of the Holy Spirit, with God's help. Let, let, can I caveat here? Quick, quick, quick encouragement for you. When God calls you to do something, he also equips you to do it. When God calls you to do something, he equips you to do it. And there are more rivers of creativity on the inside of you than you realize. Woo, it's early for that kind of word, but uh, we usually don't go that deep this early in the video. But I felt like somebody needed to hear that right now. Amen. Uh, but yeah, virtual offering. Woo. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Make sure you share the link right now. Share the link right now. Light up the chat with words of encouragement. Light up the chat. Greet one another in the chat. Uh, make sure you offer it, it, words of inspiration in the chat. If these videos have been blessing you, come on and testify. Or if God has done something great in your life recently, come on and testify of that as well. This is all part of the virtual offering. Hallelujah. Yeah, this is where we celebrate. This is where we connect. Awesome. Thank you for participating in that. Now, on to this big announcement that I wanted to share with you all. I have been doing this work, Lord, this particular work for, I don't know, about a year and a half now. And the only time I really stopped, if you will, was when I had first got COVID. And that was unplanned, but I recognized that I just needed to bow out. But in this season, God has been dealing with me about rest. He's been dealing with me about rest and I'm prayerfully making the decision to, how should I say, do a KOTK sabbatical. Now, I know some of you already are like, what? Especially those of you who are always so encouraging and so supportive. But 
it doesn't mean there will be no more KOTK. So mark this, mark this date down now in your calendars, put it on your cal digital calendar right now, January 21st. January 21st will be the airing of the next new episode of KOTK. Between now and January, though, I will still be uploading a video that will premiere at 8 p.m. every Saturday night, but it will be a replay of some of the former KOTK episodes. And I think this is going to be especially beneficial to those of you who have recently become a part of the KOTK fam. You haven't seen some of the older videos that I think has a lot of good stuff that would encourage you and that will inspire you. We've been on a series right now, but not all of the videos have been series. There have been certain concise teachings in one video. Um, and I want to I wanna go back. I want to have you go back and revisit some of those and be encouraged and be inspired by some of those. Uh, but as for me, I will be stepping back from this work for the season and I will be coming back to you. I'm God willing it is my commitment to come back to you. I'm not leaving. KOTK is not over. Somebody type in the chat. It ain't over. Stop freaking out. It's not over. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, we are we are going higher. And as I do that, I was sharing on a prayer line with my church home the other day a word entitled rest the other day. And it all sort of all of this sort of streamed from that same sort of uh, state of consciousness, if you will, that sort of uh, moment in God's presence. And when Adam, when God put Adam into a deep sleep, it was because he was taking out of Adam something that would add to Adam's life. And though Adam was asleep, if you will, it didn't mean God was not working. And so let me encourage you in this. In this season, for those of you, and I wasn't expecting to go here, but you know how we do. I'm here anyway. We might as well just deal with it. Um, for those of you who have been experiencing an influx of activity in your walk, doors opening in your respective assignments in this last quarter of 2023, I do believe that is a prophetic picture of how 2023 is going to go for you. It doesn't mean everything is going to be easy. No, but it does mean it's going to intensify. It is going to intensify. And as that happens, it will be critical for you to shore up the infrastructure of your life. It will be critical for you to shore up your relationship with God that has nothing to do with your call or ministry assignment, but everything to do with just your relationship with him, your relationship with your family members, your relationship with yourself. Um, but also it will make it would also require that you are strategic about grafting in time for rest. Hence me doing this for myself. Amen, somebody. And I want to encourage you to do the same. Amen. So uh, I feel like there's so much else I would say. I'm, I'm going to have some additional remarks at the end of this video. So I encourage you to make sure you watch to the very end um, so that you can hear some of the things I have to say as we prepare to uh, not really have a new video until January 21st of 2023. I know it's like, wow. Uh, but so much more I would say, but I feel like I want to save that for the end of the video. I want to begin to shift into our subject matter for tonight. And it is awesome. How many have been enjoying this series, The Gospel of the Kingdom? Oh my goodness. We have been having a time with this series. It has been awesome. This, for those of you who may not be aware, this is the longest series we've ever done with KOTK. We've done other great series that I encourage you, even over these next few weeks, um, that you review, such as The Science of Building Faith. That was a great series. Another one was Winning the Race. Wow, that was another great series. And so we've done a few, but this is the longest one that we've done, and it has been absolutely awesome. I've been enjoying myself. I hope you've been enjoying yourself as well. If you've been enjoying it, put it in the chat. Hallelujah. It has been awesome. Uh, but before we get into the new material tonight, I do want to review some of the key points, as, as it is my custom, uh, to review these points. I'm not going to go over every point that we have established, but I think these will be helpful for our study for tonight. So the first point is this, that the kingdom of God refers to God's exceeding and abundant ability to act or produce an effect by virtue of his authority as the absolute owner of all things. Furthermore, 
The word gospel means good news. Also, the kingdom of God is at hand means that the kingdom of God is within your reach. Mm. One's proximity to the kingdom is not a matter of time nor space, but understanding. The kingdom of God was made accessible to us through Christ himself. The kingdom of God was made accessible to us through Christ himself. Furthermore, access to the kingdom, we have access to the kingdom in regard to attitude, authority, and appearance. I'm going to say that again. We have access to the kingdom in regard to attitude, authority, and appearance. The word attitude has to do with a mental position with regard to a fact or state, a feeling or emotion toward a fact or state. Furthermore, the word repent means to change the way you think that is critical, as is this next point, and that is the word believe, essentially defined as to think to be true. So repent means to change the way you think. Believe means to think to be true. Repent has to do with turning away from an old way of thinking or an accurate way of thinking or an unhelpful way of thinking. And believe has to do with adopting a way of thinking that is truthful, that is real. My God. Furthermore, we establish that your outlook regarding your destiny is rooted in how you see yourself, your sense of identity. That's what we begin to delve into last week. And then finally, we have connection with Jesus just as he had connection with the Father. Woo! That thing got so good last week. There's more I would say on that, but I felt led to leave that point there. Woo! One of the things I love about studying the word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit, I might add, is that he always shows us a new dimension of himself or of truth. He doesn't change the truth, but it's constantly, he's constantly unpacking truth. And you realize all of eternity isn't sufficient to unpack all of these great nuggets of wisdom, insight, and truth. It's, it's a never-ending journey, and it's awesome, and we learn, and we grow, and we evolve. And so, um, man, I feel like I could say so much on that, but I want to stay focused. So let's have a word of prayer, then we're going to go to our core scripture for tonight, and we'll go into our subject matter for tonight, which I am excited about. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to delve deep into your word. God, we thank you for how you always meet us here. God, we thank you for how you are uh, just causing us to evolve in our understanding of who you are and who we are in you and all that you have given us and all that you've made us to be and to do. God, we thank you for your great love toward us that you have demonstrated toward us, that you have proven to us through the name, through the person and work of your son, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you, especially in this season, in this Advent season, which we recognize the birth of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We, we just thank you, Lord God, that you loved us enough to come, to come in a way that we can receive you, that we can be saved, that we can be made whole. God, we're so appreciative of everything that you've done. And God, I say a special prayer of gratitude and thanks for all that you've done with KOTK, Lord God. I thank you for what you have in store. God, we're excited about where you are taking us. We're excited about how you are using this work to build up people, Lord God, to draw them closer to you and to help them to walk in their purpose and their destiny and to be all that you created them to be and to do all that you've created them to do. God, we thank you. We praise you. And God, we pray over tonight. We pray, God, for the wisdom and the influence of the Holy Spirit to drench every word, every sentence, every phrase, Lord God. Bring clarity like never before as we just, as we delve deep into your word, Lord God. And let it not just be an intellectual pursuit, but God, let it go deep down beyond even the emotions and into our spirit, transforming us at the very core, that we might be transformed from the inside out. God, we thank you and we praise you and we ask these things in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. And everybody who agreed with this prayer said, amen, said, it is so, and so it is. Glory to God. So turn with me to Mark chapter 1. Woo! Glory to God. Mark chapter 1. Hallelujah. Looking at verses 14 and 15, this has been our core text for, this, for the entirety of the series. And it reads, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, 
The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Wow. So up until this point, we have been unpacking what the kingdom of God is. And we, we ventured into a realm where we broke down what it means to have access into the kingdom of God. Again, we have, ac we have access into the kingdom of God in regard to attitude. And that's what we just wrapped up last week. Authority and appearance. And tonight, I want us to begin to delve into the subject of access into the kingdom in regard to authority. Woo! I'm excited, aren't you? And there are a myriad of passages that we can refer to to discuss this topic, but I find it fitting to begin in the book of Acts. Turn with me to Acts, and we're going to look at chapter 1. Woo! Glory to God. And let's begin reading in verse... Three, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. This was after Jesus had risen from the dead, by the way. Verse four, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? We touched on this passage, I think, before earlier in the series. Look at verse 7. And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But watch this but you shall receive power. Woo! God have mercy. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth, you shall receive power. And I believe in a previous part of the series, perhaps if I rec can recall, we talked about the connection between the kingdom of God um, and receiving the Holy Spirit, accessing the kingdom of God and receiving the Holy Spirit. The two are connected. In fact, Jesus said somewhere in John chapter three that in order to see or to enter the kingdom of God, one must be born again of the spirit or of the Holy Spirit. Um, so it's really only by the Holy Spirit that we're able to have access into the kingdom. That really is a worthy video of itself. The meaning of the term, what it means to be born again. It really refers to being born of the spirit or born of the Holy Spirit, right? So in all this conversation um, that we talk about the kingdom of God, it's important to understand you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot access the kingdom of God without being born of the spirit, born from above or out without having received the Holy Spirit. In fact, let's go to Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Woo! All right. I hear you, Holy Ghost. All right, Romans chapter 8, and we're going to begin looking at verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit, watch this, of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Let me pause there. So this sort of shifts us back in to talking about the attitude of Jesus. And, it's, and we established in, previous, in the previous video that it's by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that cultivates us or that cultivates within us the attitude of Jesus, because it's the Holy Spirit, glory be to God, verse, verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So it's the Holy Spirit 
that bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, thus giving us the ability to have the attitude of Jesus. <laughs> All right, stay with me. Let's go to John now. <laughs> All right. Some of you may say it's horrible that you're starting this part as you're about to go on break. I know. I know. Because we, we're going to be on this authority piece for a minute. Woo! So John chapter 1. And. Yeah. Okay. John chapter 1 beginning in verse 10. He was in the world and the world was made through him, speaking of Christ, and the world did not know him. Verse 11, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Watch this verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right woo, to become children of God. Glory be to God. To those who believe in his name, watch this, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Children born of God who were given because of their belief the right uh, to become the children of God. In other words, the right to adopt the mindset that I am a child of God. The right to adopt the mind of Jesus. Uh, are you with me? So it's the Holy Spirit who causes us to identify ourselves as children of God. It's the Holy Spirit that cultivates within us, thereby, the mindset or the attitude of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Amen, somebody. But let's go back to Romans chapter 8. Oh, how I love this book. If you love the Bible, if you thank God for the Bible, I know it may sound old school, but if you just thank God for the Bible, put it in the chat. Say, God, we thank you for the Bible. Where would we be? Oh, my. Had we not had access to the record? Ah, glory to God. Romans chapter 8. And let's look at verse 17. Now, so let's go back to verse 16. The Spirit bears wit bears. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, verse 17. And if children, watch this, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So because the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God by virtue of our identity as children of God that has implications as it relates to inheritance. And I feel like that's a worthy point in and of itself, that your, your understanding, your inheritance is linked to your identity. Can I say that again? Your inheritance is linked to your identity. If you don't recognize that you're a child of God, you act like you don't have certain rights that children of God have. Can I say that again? If you fail to recognize that you're a child of God, you will never have the capacity to fully embrace the rights you have therein. Because then you'll feel like a thief or like an outsider, what right do you have to these blessings, to this power? If you're just a stranger, of course it's ridiculous. But if you're a child in the house, if you've been adopted, if you have been taken in and deemed a child of the one who owns the inheritance, then it is now your birthright. Oh. Lord have mercy. Who did anybody feel that like I felt it? That if you've been born of the spirit of God, 
if you have received the Holy Spirit, thus having been born from above, being made spiritually alive, and not just physically alive, but now you're spiritually alive by the Holy Spirit, by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. These rights that we talk about, this power that we talk about, whoo, is your birthright. And this deals with the authority that we have. Not just the attitude we have, but the authority. We have been authorized to operate in and exercise the power of God. I don't know if you, woo, I don't know if y'all understand what I'm saying. Authorized to walk in the power of God. I'm going to let that sink in. Jesus said, you shall receive power or exousia after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Why? Because the Holy Ghost infuses you with an awareness that you are a child of God and thereby an heir of God to the degree that you are a joint heir with Christ. Now, I know I may have lost some of you. Let's go back to John 14 so you don't think I'm just making up stuff. That's why I love this book. Because I have receipts to show. I don't just make claims. I lay you know the receipts. Uh, uh. Jesus said, verse 12 of John chapter 14, most assuredly. Now, let me put this here. Anytime Jesus, the master, the Lord of lords, the king of kings, God made flesh has to start or feels like he has to start what he's about to say by saying most assuredly, it means that whatever he's about to say is going to be hard for some folk to believe. Take note of that. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. That I go to my father is significant because that speaks of him being glorified. Oh, God, that matters because being a joint heir with Christ, his elevation is a sneak preview of yours. I don't know if y'all are with me tonight. I don't know if y'all are ready for this. That's insulting, isn't it? Of course you are. If you, tra if you track with me this long, y'all ready. Y'all ride or die. His elevation is is a sneak preview of yours. I'm going to let that sink in. I wasn't expecting to get all this heavy tonight. I knew we were going to get there, but I wasn't expecting to get there, get here so quickly. Authority and power. Go with me here. Luke. Chapter 10. Ah! Glory to God. Luke chapter 10. Check, check this out. I'm, I'm going to read this whole passage because I want to I want to I want to highlight something here. Uh, verse 17, then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. I need to pause here. Jesus had commissioned and had given authority and power to 70, 70 of the disciples and sent them out to do the work of spreading the good news of the kingdom. They returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Verse 16, or excuse me, verse 18. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Verse 19, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. 
I read the whole passage because this again is an example of passages that preachers tend to like sort of preach through or pass over some critical things and they focus on don't be overcome with pride. Uh, don't get caught up in the wrong thing, which is in order. But you're telling that to people who don't have an awareness that they have power over demonic powers. People in the pews who don't recognize that they have power over demons if they have received the Holy Spirit. So we bypass that and we take them to talk about humility, but they have no power. You're teaching them how to manage something that you have not taught them that they have. Lord have mercy. Is anybody getting anything out of this tonight? I'm confident that you are because I know I am. <laughs> Lord have mercy. God has given you power, authority. I want to highlight something here. If you look at that word authority here in Luke, it really has it, what, one definition of it. Uh, how should I put it? It's, it's derived from the word exousia. And I want to say I spoke to that earlier. I did. It's derived from the word exousia. And it really means physical and mental power or the ability or strength with which one is endued, which he, which, which he either possesses or exercises. So in this case, we see that Jesus had given his disciples, his followers, pay attention. Disciples are those who learn of the master that they might become like the master. Woo! My God, have mercy. Ah! Oh. Lord, have mercy. This is so good tonight. Take note that he had given the power essentially to do what he was doing. And that was designed to draw attention to the message or the gospel of the kingdom. And I want to caveat here. If your if your ministry, oh God, can I talk? Can I talk to my preacher friends? Can I talk to preachers in general? Ministers, I don't care what title you have. If you're if you're ordained minister, allow me to encourage you or challenge you. The scope of your ministry should never be limited merely to what you say or what you preach. Now, I know some of you may think, yeah, it should be good works. Yeah, good works, yes. But your work, your ministry needs to be accompanied with miracle signs and wonders. Evidences. The operation of the gifts of the spirit. These things are designed to bear witness to the legitimacy of the gospel which we preach. How is it that you preach a message of kingdom and power, but you demonstrate none? Lord have mercy, I'll wait. Now I know it seems like I'm trying to be messy. I'm really not. But I have observed a culture in the church world that does not operate in the power of God. It's foreign to them, and that is frightening because the power of God is at the center of the gospel. It is core to the message of the kingdom. God has given us access to his attitude, to his authority, to appearance. That appearance thing is going to be a whole other level. Are you with me tonight? Woo! I feel I, I need to find a place to stop. I really do. Should I go a little bit further? Go with me. Thank you, Lord. Go with me to Mark. There's so many places I could, I could go, but I'm going to go to Mark. And we're going to look at chapter 16. And I think this will be a good place to close as you prepare to go on our KOTK sabbatical until January. I know. 
I know, but we're not done with this series. We're going to pick up right where we left off on this series in part 13 on January 21st. But watch this. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What gospel? The gospel that Jesus preached. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will do big fundraisers. In my name, they will have a flower sale, a baked goods sale. Oh, is that, that not what it says? In my name, they will, they will feed the hungry. They will clothe the hungry. No, don't, all these things are good. That's not what it says here. He says, in my name, they will cast out demons. My God. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Glory be to God. Think about that. If you are declaring the word of the Lord, if you're preaching the Bible, but you're not operating in this power, something's off. I'll wait again. I know I'm stepping on some toes because I know there are certain denominations that don't believe in the operation of these gifts like this. They believe only the apostles were supposed to operate in this level of power. We've talked about that in previous episodes of KOTK. And so what happens is that you focus on learning the scripture, being able to quote verse and text, defending the scripture without power. It's an intellectual understanding, but it hasn't gotten to a place where you identify. It's, it's, it's like, ugh. It's like you need to seek a refreshing of the Holy Spirit with the assumption that you receive the Holy Spirit. I know I'm really, I'm, I promise you, I'm not trying to be messy tonight. You can go to church. You, I, I think of what a preacher said. You could sit up in a garage. It doesn't make you a car. It's not about being in the building. It's about being the building. More specifically, being the one in whom the Holy Spirit dwells. And all it requires, the very thing I say at the beginning of all my videos, the time has come and the kingdom of God is now at hand. Change the way you think. Jesus used the word repent, or he used the Greek version of the word, or, or the Aramaic version of the word, repent. It simply means change the way you think. Believe, accept that's true, the good news, the gospel of the kingdom. So much more I would say, but we're going to pick this up January 21st of 2023 with part 13. Um, I want to take this time right now. Um, wow. Wow. I, I just want to take the time to thank and salute all of you who have been with me on this journey and who are continuing on. I, I am, I tell people sometimes, you know, in this format, it's almost like I'm a street preacher. Um, but my street is social media and YouTube. And I believe that God has many voices in here to declare his truth that we might become all that he created us to be. And I do fervently believe that that happens through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And for those of you who have been with me on this journey and who have supported the work that I do, I just, as before I go on the sabbatical, I would be remiss if I don't emphasize again how much I appreciate your support, the emails, the message, the DMs, the messages, the love gifts. Yes, some of y'all have submitted love gifts, um, the prayers, the words of encouragement, um, and I didn't even solicit for all that. I know I, I encourage you guys to just engage in the chat, <laughs> but 
but you all have been so moved and so blessed by this word that you responded in that way. And I want to let you know how humbled I am by that. And I give God the glory because that indeed is a sign of him using this work uh, to build you up. And I am so excited. I am so full right now because I have so much in my spirit. I know God is going to do great things through this work. And I would encourage you uh, as we progress through this holiday season, as we approach Christmas, as we approach New Year's, I encourage you, if you have a church home, make sure you connect with your church home. If you don't have a church home, find a Bible-believing place where you can connect with some people and celebrate Christ's birth together. I do want to speak uh, specifically to those who are struggling with grief and mourning at this time because of all the triggers that the holiday bring. Uh, I am mindful of you. I will be praying for you during this time of sabbatical. I do ask that you pray for me as well. Anytime I'm led to go on a sabbatical like this, as it should be, I never come back the same. It's like God takes me to another place. How many know what I'm talking about? Uh, and if you don't know about the benefit of sabbatical, that means you're long overdue for one. Hello, somebody. Um, but I'm expecting God to take me to another place. He's already been just doing so much in my life personally. If I, if I may make this a very personal moment, what God has been doing in my life is phenomenal. There's no other way to put it. And he continues to blow my mind. And he's putting things in my spirit about things that will yet come to pass prophetically that I know he's not showing me everything because I know it won't overwhelm me, but I'm just, I'm excited about what God has in store. But ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are watching these videos, I'm excited about your future. I say that that sounds positive, that sounds motivational. No, I say by the spirit of God, if you've been tracking with this work, it's not because you've been tracking with me, but it's because you've been tracking with the one whom I serve, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I believe that what, you're, what he has destined for you is far greater than what you currently perceive. You know it deep down, but there's more. I know that's the case for me. I don't know everything about what God has in store for me, but I know it's great. And so I just want to encourage you as we go on this sabbatical, again, I will I will upload videos that are replays of previous episodes of KOTK. Some are going to be very old. I say very old. We've been only doing this for a year and a half. It's funny. But older, relative, relative to what we've done lately. Uh, that you may continue to be encouraged. And revisit some of these old, older series it's like The Science of Faith, Winning the Race. And for those of you who joined into this series late, review the previous 11 episodes, you will not be disappointed. There's so much else I would say, but I just feel led to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, see you in 2023. Thank you so much for your support. Continue to pray for me. Oh, make sure you subscribe because there are some things I will be sharing on my YouTube channel, even though I won't be doing KOTK. Hint, hint. So I encourage you to stay alert and stay abreast of uh, my social media platforms. Uh, but you don't have to watch these videos. There's so many other videos that you can watch. And I'm so honored and delighted that you've taken the time to watch mine. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your encouragement. Share the link. Be blessed. But until we meet one another again, God willing, January 21st, 2023, may every experience you have in this great holiday season contribute to you becoming all that God the Father has created you to be. In the mighty name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, God bless you and have a fantastic holiday season. And I'll see you in 2023 in Jesus' name. God bless.